If you enjoy the content on this channel, please like and subscribe. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days is a 2003 romantic comedy film directed by Donald Petrie from a script by Kristen Buckley, Brian Regan and Burr Steers and stars Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey. Loosely based on a picture book of the same name by Michelle Alexander and Gianni Long, the plot concerns a woman's magazine writer and an advertising executive who both begin a relationship with ulterior motives. While the story and the characters in the film are original, the dating don'ts of the picture book are included in the film. The film would be released theatrically in the United States on February 7, 2003 and was a box office success grossing $177.5 million against a production budget of $50 million. Despite this, the film garnered mixed reviews from critics who praised Hudson and McConaughey's acting and chemistry but criticized the script and predictable plot. Some production notes. Gwyneth Paltrow and director Mike Newell were originally attached to the project, but producer Linda Ops was unable to get Newell to commit to a date and Paltrow went on to work on the film A View from the Top. The yellow gown Kate Hudson wore in the movie was created by Carolina Herrera with the film's costume designer. The necklace she wears with the yellow gown is called in the film Isadora Diamond, named after Isadora Duncan. The 80 carat yellow diamond in the necklace was designed by Harry Winston and is worth $6 million. The apartment interiors were conceived by Yenden-born sculptor Zoe Waterman, who said she thought the characters should live in spaces which I consider to be dream spaces. That is to say, the apartments are as close as I've ever seen on screen to my dream apartment. I just said to myself, where would I absolutely love to live in my wildest dreams? And the whole design came together in about 15 minutes. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of just 42%, based on 150 reviews. Some fun trivia notes. Much of the scene where Andy crashes Ben's boys' night was improvised. Kate Hudson had the idea to toss the platter of veggies at the guy seated at the poker table. Donald Petrie, the director, knew she was going to do this, but the actors in the scene were truly surprised. Kate Hudson improvised plastering Matthew McConaughey with kisses during the scene which he introduces the new dog. This is why McConaughey looks genuinely surprised. A lot of the scenes in the film were improvised, for example the scene with the family album, where the character of Andy has taken pictures of Ben and herself and put them together to see what their future children would look like. There was an estimated $14.2 million worth of jewels lent to the film. When Andy and Ben go to see Sleepless in Seattle, the film released in 1993, according to the commentary, Kate ad-libbed two quotes, I've always wanted a man like Tom Hanks, and you can't watch Meg cry for two hours and not be thinking about another girl. Andy's friends, Michelle and Jeannie, are named after the authors of the book, Michelle Alexander and Jeannie Long. Londa's dress at the Warren Advertising Gala is by Chanel, and her diamond tiara is real. The name and style of the content of Composure magazine all make it a dead ringer for Cosmopolitan magazine. Catherine Heigl was one of the models on the cover of Composure magazine during the sequence of magazine covers at the beginning. Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey then would reunite in 2008 to co-star as an ex-husband and wife in a movie called Fool's Gold. The motorcycle used by Matthew McConaughey in the film is a Triumph Bonneville. At the big event, composer Martha Hamlish protested against having to play someone else's music. In real life, he had protested when asked to compose the soundtrack for The Sting, released in 1973, which was to be based on the ragtime music of Scott Joplin. However, after seeing a partially finished cut of the film, Hamlish was so enthusiastic he agreed to do the film, resulting in him winning one of his three Oscars in 1974, the others being for the best song and best soundtrack for The Way We Were, released in 1973. At the party towards the end of the film, two songs are played in the background that appear in Audrey Hepburn films, one from Sabrina, released in 1954, where they play Sabrina's theme, and one song from Breakfast at Tiffany's, released in 1961, namely Moon River. This film also marked an acting reunion for Adam Goldberg and Matthew McConaughey, who would last appeared together three years earlier in 1999's Ed TV and six years prior in 1993's Dazed and Confused. The premise of the movie appears to be directly borrowed from Sex and the Single Girl, released in 1964, as well as the ending in which also includes a taxi cab being pursued by a motorcycle, which are both part of the multiple car chase in the 1964 movie. Unfortunately, the writers never credited this movie at all, and they also took liberties of recreating its poster by copying both the soft yellow colour and style of dress and the actor's pose. Natalie Wood and Kate Hudson are both wearing pastel yellow dresses, and both couples are leaning into each other. Wood and Tony Curtis are leaning at an X shape, while Matthew McConaughey and Hudson are simply leaning against each other, head to head. When Ben is shown the article that Andy wrote, the style and format changes. When the article is first seen, it is completely formatted in blue. When we see it from Ben's point of view, the style changes, with a broken love heart taking up the majority of the page. The font also changes. 
At the big event at the end of the film when Andy walks out at the end wearing the Isadora necklace, the security takes back the necklace, but not the diamond earrings she put on with them, which means technically she stole them. Now this is one of those charming rom-com films that you can watch time and time again. Yes, by no means it's a classic, but for some reason the combination here of Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson just really make it work. Their chemistry really sizzles on screen, and they just seem to really understand each other as actors. In many ways you almost believe that they were a real life couple whilst making it. Like I said, the story is completely predictable. There is really nothing groundbreaking about this film. It's just a likeable, charming, easy, silly little film that will easily help you pass by the time. McConaughey of course has gone on to act in much more serious affair, but Kate Hudson's career unfortunately has sort of fallen short of what we expected from her. For me though, this still remains one of her highlights. This was of course at the start of her career, when there was so much promise ahead. She definitely invokes a lot of her mother, Goldie Horn's charisma on screen. And she's just completely likeable and charming within this film. As is McConaughey, who at this point in his career was known for being a rom-com actor, purely. His likeable southern charm also shines through on screen, and like I said, what really makes this film work is the chemistry. Yes, of course you know that they're going to end up together, you know that they'll find out the ulterior motives, but the idea is just to go along for the ride and have fun and enjoy. Easy, predictable, light, funny and entertaining. This is a film that I watched back in 2003 and still remember very fondly to this day. Whether it be a nostalgia trip for me, or rather this is just a good, fun, entertaining film, well that's for you as a viewer to decide. But How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days gets an 8.5 out of 10.